Hi, my name is Maggie Schifrar, and this is the beginning of our class in cognitive psychology. That is Psych 367. Welcome. Uh, one thing I know for sure is it's going to be a crazy semester, um, but we're going to try to take advantage of that by weaving in what's happening in the world with uh, cognitive principles that might help us to understand what's going on. So let's start with our first slide here. It's a quote from Shakespeare. There's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. In other words, how we think about the world determines how we see the world, how we understand the world. And this is really the fundamental principle of cognitive psychology. I've got a couple of other images on this slide. One is um, a fake. Actually, they both are in different ways, but uh, one you could see is a picture of Abraham Lincoln with a quote, don't believe everything you read on the internet just because a picture with a quote is next to it. It turns out that cognitive psychologists have found that we are more likely to believe text if there's a picture next to it. Crazy as that sound, it actually works, which is why scammers use it. Um, another one is uh, drink more champagne, it improves cognition, that's a proven fact. That is not a proven fact, um, that is a false statement but you'll notice it appears next to um, someone who seems to know what he's talking about, and so people might believe it because we have a tendency to uh, believe what we hear. Um, but what is cognitive psychology? What's the field about? Well, it includes a lot of different topics, and we're going to cover them all in more or less depth. So cognitive psychology includes the study of perception. It includes the study of attention, remembering, forgetting, language, problem solving, how you categorize things. Um, it's a lot of different topics and it's connected to a lot of other fields which we'll talk about in a later uh, video. Um, here are some examples of the things that cognitive psychologists study. Um, up top you see pictures of people doing incredibly stupid things, right? Um, sticking their hand out near a tiger, a tiger uh, with a shark with very large teeth, um, pointing a gun at your own head, um, thinking that it's going to be fun to play with a bison. Um, how is it that some people at one point in time saw these behaviors as reasonable? What is it that made them think that was a good thing to do? Cognitive psychology is the scientific study of behaviors that people perform, but also their thoughts. Um, and one of the things that we'll get to repeatedly in this class is that different people see and understand the world in different ways. And down below I've got some data from a Pew uh, survey that was done back two years ago, back in uh, 2018, on how the world perceived the U.S. So um, there's two different judgments that are being reported here. Um, one is how much confidence do people outside of the US uh, have in President Trump? And you can see that there's a big difference. About a quarter of people have a lot of confidence in Trump, in Trump at least in 2018, and about three quarters don't. How do people feel about the US in general? Well, that's a 50-50 split or close to it. Um, so the U.S. is one thing, but different people perceive it and us differently. Um, context plays a really big role in how we perceive something. And the picture that I'm showing now is a picture of a bunny. Um, and you can see that the guy's just uh, rubbing the bunny's nose a little bit. You can see the, the uh, bunny's ears out the back each week you'll have some activities to do inside of Canvas and um, one, your first activity for this unit will be to take a look at a video of that uh, picture of a bunny having its nose stroked and then to tell me um, what you see about it. Another thing that cognitive psychologists study is basically the question of why are we so clueless? 
And a lot of that has to do with attention. We can pay attention to some things, and that means we pull our cognitive resources to analyzing that thing. Um, and when we do that, we ignore everything else. That means we're pulling resources away from whatever it is we're not paying attention to. So texting while driving turns out to be more dangerous than driving drunk, right? Nobody would drive drunk. You'd have to be out of your mind to drive drunk. But a shocking number of people will text while they drive. Why is texting so dangerous? Because when you text, when you're on your cell phone, that's what you're paying attention to. And what happens in the outside world, you have less cognitive resources to devote to that. So problems arise. Um, and the funny thing is that everybody understands that texting or using your cell phone affects the driving ability of other drivers. Um, very few of us want to admit the truth, which is that it also affects our driving and lowers our driving ability. Uh, another topic is something called stranger danger. You may have been raised with this little saying that if you don't recognize somebody, then that person is potentially dangerous and you need to get away from them. In other words, strangers are dangerous. But if you look at the data, if you look at who actually hurts children, it's not strangers. Your children are much more likely to be hurt by someone they know than by someone they don't know. Um, and yet we have this belief that it's the strangers that are dangerous.